soil is the clay. It's the clay in which the roots of the, the plants gave rise to the coal. Some came without the nutrients, but it weathered them. The organic reaction between the, the plant roots and the clay made the clay minerals. Uh, so whenever I'm over in this part of the state, I look for foundations, road cuts, uh, and usually just dig a sample five-gallon bucket, and uh, then I bring it back and experiment with it. But now I build a salt kill out in Zion, and it fires pretty high cone, like cone 10. Uh, so what temperature are you? Probably, well, it's hard to know because we have a barometer out on the side. 2,500 meters? 2,500 meters. Uh, but you have to have a clay to stand up to that temperature. These, these clays here have too much iron, they'll melt. So, I'm always counting. Yeah, he's always getting, so this piece right here, and my mom's always talking about happy accidents. This piece right here, I'll pass it around. It's pretty cool to have to do it. Yeah. Pass it around for person to person. Okay. So, you, so you, you, you use those things you discover about the various qualities of the clays to your yeah. advantage? Like if, like if
same, I weighed 126 pounds. And he wanted to show me what he did. He was proud of it. He said, Roger, take this green sap on it. It was 30 feet long. He said, run it through the furnace door and just like row in a boat, stick it on the steel there and row that glass out that other little door on the other side. I said, what little door? You look in there and it's like white. You can't see it. Like looking at the sun. And uh, so I gave it a couple rows, I guess. And I was like, from here to that little heart shaped front of door, leaning against the side of the door. And I said, I think my pants are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so I jumped back, and obviously I was sweating and burning and trying to put my pants out. That's so funny. You know what the story got to in my mind? When I tell the story, I think you guys, I saw trees over a furnace with people walking over the top of the trees, <laughs> skipping off. That's how my, how my imagination took me. That's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not like, not like that. But anyway, I got a lot of respect for the process there. And that's why I became a sculptor. Because we got a connection we got to working in the steel mill and they capped the furnace and poured in the ladles that were big enough to hold two of my contracts as a ladle. So there's something to be 
to be a better sculptor if I had gone to art school. I don't know about that. It shows you how far you can go. Just a geologist. I'm a geologist for Pete's sake. You guys are all going to be masters in a short time. A short time. So what Rod has been doing to that is just a very simple armature. So you see, it's, it's pretty simple construction. Taking very little time to make. And then these screws right here are put on there to help hold the cliff. So Roger's going to start that right now. Can you see that? And you, if, with cameras, if you want to get up and get close to get better shots and stuff, come on up. Roger is very modest. Uh, he didn't say many things of how he helped uh, the twin boys that we had. Um, they had, um, they needed an escape uh, from the everyday school things, and they were very creative from when they were born. They, you know, they showed a lot of ability and creativity, and had a hard time with reading and writing and those skills. And, and if you're lucky, either you or your children in your lifetime will have a mentor. And Roger was their mentor, and they looked up to him, and he really um, did wonders for their um, ego, um, we caught them so much and stuff like that. So our family's really embedded with Roger. Um, for, you know, it just, uh, when I think of me going to school, I don't have any memories. So No, you know what it was? It was because we were only paying three fifty, so he was getting us hyper, so we'd stay up all night. We were already hyper. <laughs> well, that was the point. I didn't know that. But so I'm feeding them caffeine and Mountain Dew, whatever it was, and they were bouncing off the walls for two hours or whatever. It was three hours. It's nice. To Let me back up and tell you what I just did. I just sculpted. This is this is the armature. This is the format that I used initially to get. Practice. I thought, well, I'm, I'm interested in doing faces, uh, but I wanted to get them through the firing. Well, this is a way to get them through the firing. The finished piece is only going to be half an inch thick. So I made this little board arrangement, put a lump of clay on there, put a piece of uh, thin plastic, put the dry cleaner bag, conform it, just make the rough shape of the face, eye sockets, uh, bridge of the nose, and then I'll uh, some get some more clay. Uh, Can everybody see okay? I'm going to pull you a little bit closer here, Robert. Just so we can get... Oh, let's see. Yeah, let's, you had mentioned pulling this. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to pull that forward.
pass these around just, just so people can look at your tools. Oh, yeah. So check out Roger's tools. Roger also makes all his tools for uh, for eyes and for. Lay that on there, find the find the eyes. Alright, Roger works fast, guys. You know what I think we should probably do is we may want to all just stand up and come around and we'll look. Because uh, it's gonna be a lot better. So why don't everybody come on in here and stand up and Using brain-eye hand contact. 
Never talk to yourself. Never say, oh my gosh, that's two millimeters to the left. That's, that's, uh, the face is distorted. It's not symmetrical. Don't talk to yourself. Don't use words. Use the right brain. The right okay. brain's the nonverbal. Uh, the right verb, yeah, nonverbal, it's emotional, uh, spatial. Yep. And uh, the left brain is logical, numerical, and it gets in the way. So basically, because you're just going feeling when it feels good. Right. I don't, I don't use the, what's that thing you used, I used to tell you? It's Cal calipers or? Uh, now, if I'm doing a real person, I use calipers. Okay. Get measurements. Uh, so the first thing I do is, Add the nose. If I want, I can add a little bit, a little bit for the uh, cheekbones. And then I'll add a little, little cigar shape for the, for the lips. And I'll probably take a look at it from the side there. Nostrils are real tough, so I'm gonna set my tools here. <laughs> Yeah, get up in there, guys. Yeah, that's what part we're having doing. trouble with. Go ahead. I'm going to make a bunch of them. You can finish them off. I usually get up in there with that tool, open up the nostrils a little bit. Put a little filter in there. It's amazing to get a name for that thing. Filter. Filter. <laughs> Instead of using slip, I just use spit generally. Yeah, I just, well, I've done a few thousand of these, so I don't. And again, this is a demonstration piece. I just let the face build itself. And don't, in this case, not a preconceived notion about what it is I want. So that was beautiful. Did you hear that? You said, I just let the face build itself. It's definitely non-verbal, I learned that. It's not, not try to talk myself through it. I was telling somebody else, I think Dorothy was telling her that yourself? Could you feel people's heads or how? I, <laughs> like really? I had a, a couple models. I had to do a full standing. Uh -huh. 
I hired a model for that. And I, I had the calipers out to get the proportion. And then I just did the rest of it by the seat of my pants or by the brain eye. And you also had, so when you go into Roger's studio, he would have, he'd have a mirror that he'd look in, but then he would have tons of pictures from National Geographic or, and they were plastered all over everywhere. So he'd find these great faces from magazines and different uh, views and everything like that. And they would be all over a studio, so he'd have references to look at eyes. And well, yeah, I did. In the beginning, I did a whole series of small puffs. That's a Lenny Lennon view there. That's a, the my rendition of what the local people in Bald Eagle Valley and around Spring Creek looked like. There. Mm -hmm. Lenny Lenape, it translates as the authentic people, <laughs> the original people. So they were they actual were, people. They were, they were the first and the best. Uh, so cool that it's from the Glen. Bronze over there on the left is an Australian Aboriginal. That was from a picture. And the uh, African with uh, little bumps on his face, over, that was from a National Geographic picture. So there's nothing wrong with using pictures. If you have to do a real person, and who was it? Bob said that you might have to do a real person. Yes, you only have one photograph. Right from the front, that's not going to work. You need that. You need that profile. You have to, have to be uh, looking in from the side to get the, the profile. Well, and how'd you do the the ones from the National Geographic if you didn't have the profile? Well, I don't know faces. I they, they had pictures. They had pictures of other tribesmen in the pictures. But, you know, at some point, you got to be the artist. You can't just work from photographs. You use the photograph to get the proportion and what constitutes the difference in races. But at some point you just in fact I found that once you do it three or four times, it'll be ingrained in your mind. You'll know what to do. You can you'll know it. what constitutes Einstein's face or George Washington or Joe Paterno uh, or the real a real person I mean, and the difference between Mark's face and my face, if you actually measure it, it is millimeters. But we have this uncanny ability. What makes my face so beautiful in your soul? <laughs> I'm older. <laughs> It'll happen to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you just use the, the photos as a guide so that you're, they're recognizable as a regular type. But if you don't have a profile, you pull somebody else's profile out understand how flat the nose is or how strong the bridge of the nose is or how strong the brow ridge. The Aborigine had extremely heavy brow uh, bone, bone structure. And once you realize these differences, then you can do them right off the top of your head. But you got to do them. you got to do a few of these. And that's 